Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. This time we're going to take a look at building a bevel gear. Now a bevel gear is a little bit different from the gears we've seen before. And one of the reasons why is the gear actually looks different. This is what a basic bevel gear looks like. And you'll notice that the teeth on here are sitting at an angle. This is something to be paying attention to because there's actually more than one piece within all of the VEX equipment in which the teeth sit at an angle. We also have this piece here, which is smaller, and we have this piece here, which is larger. And how they sit is actually different. In the basic bevel gear, when you put the teeth together, you find that they sit at about a 90 degree angle. However, if you take these two and put them together, you will find they do not sit at a 90 degree angle. It's actually greater than 90 degrees. And with these, we find that they sit at an angle that's shallower than 90 degrees. So which one of these you use depends on your overall goal. Now, traditionally, a bevel gear sits at a 90 degree angle, which means we use two of these. But if you're like me, I don't have a lot of these. So if I need to build multiple bevel gears, I can't. So we need to look at these other gear sizes. While they don't work together to form a 90 degree angle, if we take one of each, they will work, and they will sit at 90 degree angle if you use a small and a large. So look at your equipment before you be, get started so you can grab the pieces that you actually need and enough for what you need. So today we're going to build it using the basic 45 degree angle bevel gear. Along with the gear, I'm going to need a handle to turn it with. I'm going to need a set of lock or three hole spacers. I'm going to need four because two gears, two axles. So I need two for each axle. And then I've also got all of the rivets I'm going to need to make this work as well. I've also got four of my locking collars because I need two for each axle. I'm also going to grab two of my larger black spacers. Um, I actually want two of these because we're going to need to get the position of one of these very carefully tuned, and this will help with that. I also have a set of bolts and kept nuts, so that, that way we can attach our gearbox. And this is a smaller gearbox. It's often called a gearbox because you might set a gear on the inside of the box. We are also going to need two axles. Now I've got two different size axles that I'm going to use. I've got a three inch and a four inch axle. And that's partly due to, no, I don't really need a four inch axle for one of these two. It'll fit just fine without that. So let's go ahead and look at what we're going to do. Putting the position of these in place can be a little tricky. So it's best if we actually leave that until we got the whole arrangement set up. So I'm actually going to place this first. Now I want to place it close to the edge here. I don't want to place it right up at the edge because, well, it doesn't happen to line up with any holes. You see there's a row of holes here on the bottom. And if I place it here, I'm going to hang over the edge, which isn't really good structurally to do. So I'm actually going to move this into the second row of holes. I'm also going to set this so that that way I have one space here, one gap or one row of holes here separating the back base plate or uh, flat plate from this gearbox. So let's go ahead and get this attached. I'm going to need two of my bolts in here. And then what I'm going to do is pick this up and let's go ahead and um, fasten this down. Um, holding this in place, you can also see another reason why having a second person does help because then you can use both hands to try and attach this into place. So I'm just going to tighten that down the best I can, and then let's go ahead and we'll use this to tighten down just a tad bit more. Always good to have just a little extra tightening to it. Not over tightening, just a little extra to hold it in place. Okay, so now that we have this in place, I can begin looking at doing um, what I need to line this up. Now just for the heck of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these holes along the side and I'm going to go down one, two, and I'm going to go down to the third hole. Now 
unlike what I've done in prior videos, I'm actually going to place this on the outside instead of the inside. And the reason why is how I'm going to use locking collars to hold the axle down so it doesn't slide. And I'm going to be placing them on the inside. So I want to leave myself the space to do that. So let's go ahead and get our rivets into place. Okay, and you see third row down. So I need to do the same thing over here. So one and two. Okay, so now let's go ahead and one of my rivets fell apart. Let's go ahead and get the gear in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this through the center. But I did mention that I need locking collars in there. So while I'm threading it, I'm going to go ahead and slide the locking collar down in here so that I can get them through. And there we go. I'm not going to tighten these down yet because I may need to adjust my position. But I'm going to get them in there so we have them ready to go. And then all I do is slide that bevel gear into place. And I'm at least good for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this about right here because what I need to do now is I need to figure out where do I have to place this to line them up. So I'm going to hold that gear into place and thread the axle through to see which hole it goes in. And when I get this just right, once it's in the right hole, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And now I've identified that this hole right here is where my axle went through. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to need to place my spacers. So I'm going to take this out of one side, and I'm going to get my spacer down here. And I'm going to place it on the inside this time. Okay, and so there's the hole that I'm going to need. So let's go ahead and get the other spacer into play. So I need to use this hole here. So let's slide that down and we'll put the rivet in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get to kind of the tricky part of this. I need to get these locking collars in here. And I'm going to put one down here on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold this in the, whoops, I'm going to hold this in place as I try to thread through the spacers and through the locking collar. There we go. Now, I mentioned needing these, these black spacers in order to position everything, and this is actually where they're going to go. Because I need, I need this bevel gear positioned here, but that leaves a really wide gap between the bevel gear and that plate. And it just so happens that two of these larger spacers is the spacing that I need in order to position that where I want it. So now what I'm going to do is get the gear fed on there, and we find that there we go. Now, with that into position, we see that it rotates. So there's what I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock down the collar that's on the inside. And let's get this rotated to where I can see that um, piece. And let's tighten that down. Okay. <laughs> I made one tiny mistake and I accidentally put switched these around. I actually wanted that four inch um, axle down over here, but it, it'll have to just do for now. So let's go ahead and get the other um, locking collar into place. And now that that gear is locked into place, let's go ahead and get the locking collars for this one tightened down. And there we go. Whoops. I 
I didn't get that one tightened enough. There we go. Now it's not going to go out. Okay. And once we attach the handle, here is our bevel gear. So you'll notice there a little bit of noise as I turn this. This is one where it can take a lot of fine tuning of all of the pieces in order to get it tightened down just perfectly. I have another one here that shows what it looks like using two different sizes for those bevel gears. So instead of two of the same size. And this one, after taking some care to knock or lock everything down perfectly, you'll notice is much quieter. Okay, so that is how you build a bevel gear. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button in order to keep up with any of the other videos we'll be making about gears or all other tutorials we make here at Myth Badger Videos.